Well, are not the Kardashians, Miss Markle. Amanda Plaell says the young royals must move with the times but be careful what they wish for. After visiting Cardiff with Harry for her third official public engagement, Meghan Markle must have been delighted with the wall-to-wall -wall media coverage. She was doing selfies with the crowd, signing autographs, kissing hands, throwing high fives, encouraging group hugs, and the cameras loved it. Harry even invited the crowd of youngsters to mock his fiancé, saying, Everyone give Meghan a hug. Go. The prince was pictured surrounded by young girls thrilled at being allowed to put their arms round him. It was certainly change for the monarchy. But was it change for the better? Of course, Meghan is a welcome breath of fresh air for the institution. Her glamour, confidence and youthful sense of fun have injected it with him and popularity. And yet to see a royal of Harry's rank, not very long ago, remembered, he was spared to the air. Being mobbed in this way just wasn't very British or regal. Indeed, centuries of tradition were being washed away. I don't want to be po-faced, and quite understand that the monarchy needs to adapt and modernize. But what next? Should we all be hugging Camilla and Charles on their next walk about? Or, God forbid, the Queen? It is clear Meghan is enduringly desperate to please. Joining the firm is a daunting prospect even for a sophisticated 36-year-old TV celebrity. Yet every item of her £3,300 outfit in Cardiff was sending out a blatant message. The women empowering earrings, the £1,350 cruelty-free Stella McCartney coat, the £295 handbag whose purchase provides money to abandoned and orphan children. There's a thin line between doing good and signaling how virtuous you are. We may live in an age of social media, but the Windsors are not the Kardashians. Times have moved on since the Victorian constitutional historian Walter Badgett wrote of the royal family, its mystery is its life, we must not let in daylight upon magic. But to a great extent, his words still hold true. The monarchy survives on respect and restraint, on mystery and, yes, magic. It is precisely because of her dignity and refusal to play to the cameras, to drum up that Hollywood, red carpet fever we saw in Cardiff that the Queen is one of the most successful monarchs in our history. Yes, the young royals must move with the times, but they should be careful what they wish for. Chris Tarrant gave several different answers to police about how much he had drunk after being arrested for drink driving near his Berkshire home. Perhaps the who wants to be a millionaire host should have phoned a friend for a lift. The Tower of Talent After the Grand Bell Tower disaster the local school which lost for pupils in the inferno had to move premises. Now, just seven months later, Kensington Aldrich Academy has not only returned to its premises, but received the highest possible Ofsted rating. The morning after the blaze, 56 of their pupils sat their maths exams in a makeshift hall, many in the clothes they were wearing when they escaped the flames. Almost a quarter got E or B grades. Teachers were praised for creating a culture where pupils are bold fearless and undaunted. The Academy's motto is Intrepidus Undaunted. Deservedly so. Taken Starlian Neeson says that at 65 he'll soon have to hang up his action man persona in movies. I'd like to think I know when an audience is going to look at me and go, oh, come on. You can't outrun the train. Given that our movie critic Ryan Diner described his latest all-ocean movie The Commuter as a reasonable ride, these days I couldn't outrun the fat controller. The bottom line from Bridget. Bridget Bardo says many actresses making number sign made to allegations are ridiculous hypocrites who flirted with producers to get roles, then, to get attention, claim they were pestered. She relished the treatment she got as a young actress. I found it charming when I was told that I was beautiful or that I had a nice little backside. In other words, says Bridget. Those wrong number sign make to campaigner should turn the other cheek. French President Emmanuel Macron demands £45 million to pay for security measures in Calais in return for the loan of the Bayou Tapestry. Truly, Lee stitch up. If anyone should be paying up, it's Angela Merkel. She opened Europe's doors wide to 1.5 million migrants, many of whom had just one aim, to get to Britain. Westminster Wars the Prime Minister's decision not to give former Chancellor George Osborne the peerage has been seen as a calculated snub to her archenemy. Perhaps Mrs. May just thought that with umpteen jobs already, George had enough on his plate. 
defending claims that at 72 he will be too old for the job if Labour wins the 2022 election. Jeremy Corbyn says he's fit and runs three miles a week. When asked if he himself was a Corbynite, he modestly said, No, I'm JC. Oh dear, such delusions of grandeur. But Jesus had saved the world by the age of 33. UKIP leader Henry Bolton is spotted dining and holding hands with his racist girlfriend after trying to save his career by claiming they broke up. I haven't been that happy in many years, he said of their three-week love in he is defiant and refusing to quit, insisting, I'm going nowhere. That's exactly where he's taking you, kid. Ewan's cruel betrayal. After Ewan McGregor dumped his wife of 22 years for his TV co-star, his eldest daughter Clara tweeted a picture of her parents with dad cropped out. Now his 15-year-old daughter Esther has written the heart-wrenching song including the line saying those pictures, they're making me cry. She is said to be referring to snaps of her father kissing new lover. Mary Elizabeth Winstead, who is 18 years younger than her mother Eve. I don't know to forgive, Esther sings. I don't know if I can. Ruining me. Selfish fathers forget when they abandon their wives what it does to the children. Daughters are hardest hit. If the man they love most in the world can destroy their family, what man can they ever trust? The secret to his new spell body is not dieting, says celebrity chef Gordon Ramsay but a weighted jacket that makes walking hard work. You'd have thought his massive ego would be enough to weigh him down. Colin Firth says he will never work with Woody Allen again after Allen's daughter Dylan described his alleged sex assault on her. Firth starred in Allen's Magic in the Moonlight in 2014. Yet Dylan first made these allegations years ago. When's Nicola ever home? Nicole Kidman's Nashville pastor says the hard-working actress is planning to add to her family she already has two adopted children with Tom Cruise she apparently never sees, as well as a biological child with husband Keith Urban and a surrogate one. My force, I've realized, in my life is maternal, she says. Keith and I would love to have more babies. We try to have sit-down dinners every night we're at home. Just one question. Since he's a cheering country rock star and she had four movies out last year, a TV series, and three more films planned this year. When does Nicole actually sit down to dinner with the kids? I'm rather warming to William's no one buzz cut. He has beautiful eyes and a ready smile, more noticeable now he doesn't have failing fuss to distract us. Facing up to politically challenged reality didn't do the career of Jason Statham any harm. Mrs. Merton once quipped to Debbie McGee, what first attracted you to the millionaire Paul Daniels? Yet no one asked what attracted the magician to Debbie. Currently she's appearing on the Strictly Come Dancing Live Tour and is the only 59-year-old I know who can't stretch her leg up around her ears. I thought that by the time you reach my age everything stiffens up and there is no hope but I have surprised myself. I feel fantastic, she says. And you look it, girl. Paul was a lucky man.